welcome to the future and a revolution in sound. A sound beam that works like a spotlight. It focuses sound only on the people who want to hear it. Could it mean an end to noise pollution? Thus, the four-wheel drive that thinks it's a tank. We test the future of off-road driving. And we meet Jay Ellison, who's placing all his hopes on a new treatment for multiple sclerosis. First, a new device which could transform the way in which we experience sound. Normal sound from a voice or a speaker is like the light from a bulb. Switch it on and it radiates everywhere. Just like when I shout to Philip or over there, everyone can hear me. But an astonishing new technique from America makes sound travel in a totally different way. Less like a lamp and more like a torch or a spotlight. Well, Anya Sitaram has been in Boston hearing all about it. Pretty good, eh? Well, it's not that I can't find the beat, it's I can't hear it at all. In fact, the only people who can hear the music are the dancers themselves. That's because they're standing in their own personal sound beam, pointed at them just like a beam of light. If I stand here, I can hardly hear the music, but if I go just here, it's really clear. Now, we're used to the idea that loud sound spreads uncontrollably, but for the first time, we're directing the exact location of the sound. The audio spotlight is the most revolutionary way to generate sound since the loudspeaker, and it's being developed here at the MIT... Anya. Anya, Anya, could you come upstairs? Hi, is that Joe? I'm on my way. Hi, Joe. Hi. Apart from trying to startle me downstairs, what's the point of all of this? Well, the idea is that rather than filling a room with sound, you can put sound only where you want it. So how does this differ from the loudspeaker on my stereo system? Well, the loudspeaker on your stereo makes sound that spreads very quickly, filling a room with sound. This, in contrast, makes a very narrow beam of sound that you can shine like a light. Normal sound is rather like a light bulb flooding a room. What Joe has done is extraordinary, making sound that's more like a spotlight. He makes use of high-frequency ultrasound waves beyond our hearing, which travel in straight lines. The ultrasound transmits audible sound in a long, thin beam, which can project the sound up to 200 meters. Occasionally I'll whisper in someone's ear uh, from several stories up. Or when we have uh, meetings and functions down in our lobby, uh, we have caterers walking around with dishes in their arms, so I'll make smashing glass sounds appear by their feet and they look around like there's something dropped. To show just how directional it is, we're testing out the audio spotlight in this large space. Now, because you can't actually see a sound beam, we've attached a laser pointer to the audio spotlight. And as it moves across the wall, that's exactly where the sound beam is hitting. So in a minute now, I'm going to move it across the wall and pass the camera so you should be able to hear the music or Mozart really loudly at home. So wait for it. It sounds tinny compared to normal hi-fi quality sound because Joe is still perfecting the bass. The beam is extremely narrow, just half a meter wide. Joe first had the idea for the audio spotlight when he was just a student. Well, I had been a loudspeaker engineer since high school and I was always very frustrated with the inability of a loudspeaker to control where your sound was. Um, so I had the idea of using interacting ultrasound beams. What Joe does first is combine the music with ultrasound. This recreates the complex wave patterns of the music at a much higher frequency that can't be heard. He uses a specially designed speaker to send out this high frequency ultrasound beam.
physical properties of the air then distort the beam, producing a range of frequencies, including audible sound. Because Joe knows exactly how much distortion the air causes, he can predict how to combine the music with the ultrasound to get the music out again. The possibilities for its applications are almost endless. So, for example, in a museum, if you're standing in front of a painting, you may want to hear something about that painting, but you don't want to have to disturb people who are standing at other paintings. The sound beam can't cover very long distances yet, but once perfected, it could be used to pick out just one person in the crowd, a personal message system in public places like airports and stations, or even a personal speaker for music. Maybe someday we'll be able to travel on the plane without having to use headphones. You already have your own personal light source and your own personal air source. Why not your own personal sound source right above your head? If the audio spotlight catches on, it could transform everyday life, bringing peace and quiet to otherwise noisy places. But sometimes we don't always want that. Joe, over here! Well, if you want to have your own private party, the Audio Spotlight could be beaming sound direct to you too in the next couple of years. And for a closer look at how it works, you should visit the Tomorrow's World website. The address is www.bbc.co.uk. That address is also at the end of the show. <laughs>